So welcome to this uh, little webinar. That's our training number two, uh, insect training. We do uh, several surveys in the area. And today, this is about the count survey. So for counting abundance. So let me share my screen and we'll go into present mode. You see the presentation, uh, Lucy? Yep. Perfect. Yeah, I can see it. Excellent. All right. So urban insect and today the count survey. How do we count insect in the area and how you can help us? So first, I want to quickly, I briefly talked about the different partners that we have. These are our site partners. Uh, because we have sites at Massaudobon, which is uh, uh, explicitly at uh, the Belmont site, uh, the water uh, Cambridge uh, department as well, which is a fresh pond at Fresh Pond uh, Reservation, uh, Green and Open Somerville as well as Somerville uh, Community Growing Center. This is the growing center where we do some insect surveys as well. Actually, we do our three kind of surveys. I'll talk a little bit more about that. And we do an extensive program of habitat biodiversity assessment at the Middlesex Falls Reservation, therefore also including insect survey. Okay. Claire O'Neill is me. Uh, let me tell you a little bit of uh, what uh, IWA is. So uh, IWA was founded uh, in 2017. That's when we incorporated. And uh, we are totally focused on biodiversity and how to protect it. And for us, what this means is that we want to bring biodiversity knowledge and science, ecological ethics, and environmental leadership to the heart, to the core of organization and communities and in the daily life of people. Um, people know us through various different kind of program. Uh, some know us through our guides and etiquette because we develop guides and etiquette about you know, species, habitat, and uh, describing how to handle ourselves when we do our many human activities. Uh, so for example, you know, birding, herping, when you travel, when you volunteer, how to be a good conservation leader and all these kind of things. Um, some know us through our nature lessons. We have also a program which is called Nature Circle, uh, where we develop little nature lesson plans for people to uh, enact them and to uh, use them wherever they are, with their family or um, you know, alone in nature. But most of us now know us through our co-creative citizen science, which is really focused on advancing biodiversity and climate research. And we'll get into the details of that. And what is important, it's only for me, so I'm the founder of Us Wise Aware, by the way, uh, this is to uh, give science back to the people. Um, I think that there is an unhealthy kind of um, uh, segregation somehow, separation between uh, science and the public. Uh, and I want these two to come you know, much closer to one another. I think it's very important for the debate and for you know, having informed decision uh, you know, with respect to all the things that is happening around us. Uh, so again, for us, this is about species and ecosystems knowledge, right? And we really, ecosystem is important because we have a system view of the world. So you're going to see that we are not focused solely on one species or one kind of habitat. For us, everything is interdependent and therefore we want to study the system as a whole, right? Uh, this is also to call or to respond to the call from E.O. Wilson, famous entomologist and, you know, the modern father, father of biodiversity somehow. Uh, to indeed study ecosystems um, because a lot of data is lacking there. Not enough studies happen in this realm. Ecological ethics is really our pillars for us. Um, for me, I'm a data scientist, a statistician originally, so I come with you know, an angle for open and global science. Uh, I think it's very important that the data is shared, so we nature data, and so that we can help locally nationally and globally. Now, we cannot be in our bubble, really. Uh, the issue is a global issue, and the only way that can we really solve that together is by being together and sharing our knowledge there and know about democratization of science. So, uh, citizen science. So, the people who attend usually this webinar are interested in counting with us insects. And a lot of uh, the time, or some, most of the time, people ask me, is it going to be tough? Is citizen science hard? No, it's not not tracking wild horses in Mongolia, for instance. <laughs> Am I going to learn something every single day? For me, I've been learning every single day or every single time that I am, I've been in nature since I'm a kid. Is it useful? Definitely. It's absolutely critical. However, it has to be done right. You know, not everything that we do uh, uh, constitute, you know, uh, uh, an act of citizen science. We have to be careful about that. 
Is it fun? I always have fun, you know, when I'm out <laughs> there, I'm learning. So, here is just to show you briefly, uh, to give you a little bit of a backbone background in terms of what is missing, uh, the type of data that is missing currently, uh, and the models. Uh, and all the citizen science that we do at Earthwise Aware definitely evolved to try, uh, evolves around the theme so that we can supply lacking data. You know, species interaction, I often talk to the people about the necessity when you take, for example, a picture to not just zoom in or crop in on that species, but we, to see also where that species is on what plant and with what other insect, animals or whatever it interacts. Um, the type of data that is also lacking is, you know, how do these species move, you know, across large geographic uh, scales? Uh, the demography is important as well. We don't do too much, of course, in terms of genetic, right? So because we are not looking at this level, it's hard. You need to have some capacity and some uh, resources there. Uh, but all of the rest, somehow, the kind of data that we uh, uh, collect, you know, can help in all this uh, missing uh, mechanism. So uh, often I talk about, you know, this need, the need for citizen science is because we need to understand, predict, and act in a timely manner. Things are accelerating right now in terms of things, how things are changing. Um, the issues is what was observed yesterday is changing today under new conditions that we, complete, don't, we do not completely grasp, right? Not enough is observed, right, at any time and over a long period of time. So for example, you take an area like the Fells, which is one of our urban forests, you might have some sparse data, sparse study, and then boom, nothing for 10 years, right? So the thing that happened between the, you know, uh, 10 years ago and now is not there, right? So I am, I want us to start looking and to provide this kind of regularity in data. Um, important factors are missed altogether, such as, you know, for example, some species interactions. Um, and often that goes with the fact that we have a tunnel vision, we have a detail-oriented vision. And certainly here in America, we have a tendency to really focus on species. And what I say is um, that, you know, we focus on the tree and we forget the forest, or we don't see the forest. And the thing that we are trying to do at Earthwise Aware is actually to bring the forest into the picture, right? to understand of all the things that are among the trees and how all these things interact with one another. So. Uh, the help is, you know, you helping us in our various studies, and in this case, for this webinar, is how to count. All right. Now, zooming on the arthropods or insects and spiders, etc. Um, so we do three kind of surveys in the area. Um, and for the longest time, I was trying to, you know, find a way of talking about them in a way that is easy to remember. And I think that I found that, you know, uh, I think it was last week, is essentially three surveys. One is about seeing, and that means that it's about species occurrences and mapping. One is about counting, and that's related to the abundance, how much of things do we have. And one is about connecting, putting the pieces together, and you know, this kind of interaction that we talked about you know, uh, a few minutes ago. So species occurrence and mapping, seeing, species composition and abundance, counting, connecting, phenology and systems. Right? These are some of um, the graphs or data that we collect. You'll see that. Um, so this is, you know, a mapping. Seeing is about mapping. Where are things happening? It's not necessarily accounting for where things are not, right? Uh, species composition and abundance here. And then phenology, putting, you know, things into perspective with respect to one another. All right. But today, this is training number two. This is about our second kind of survey. This is about counting. And for us, counting arthropods, we use a protocol. Uh, so I'm a data person, remember that. So I usually, one of my strengths is about protocol and finding protocol. I'm not interested in reinventing the wheel. I want to also help other scientists. So uh, we found a very nice protocol through the University of North Carolina uh, that really looked at arthropod at a level that I like a lot because it's not focused on the species necessarily. It goes higher in the taxonomy. It looks at orders and then, you know, going down if, we, if once wants to. Uh, and that really fulfilled one of my goals, which is to understand, you know, what's going on, not just at a species level, but, you know, over, you know, populations of different species, going much further, much higher in the taxonomy. So I like what they are doing. Uh, we've been working with them and helping them on some aspects, a really fantastic uh, little group there. And we can use their data because their data is open. So we can use their data for our own, um, you know, studies. And we also providing the data to their studies, which uh, feed into uh, one project, which is called the Phenomismatch Project. Uh, and we're going to go there in a minute. So 
why? Why counting? So people don't forget, we often forget that arthropods, insects in general, are a critical food source for wildlife. Actually, when you look at these birds, um, we often forget that when a bird is at, you know, its early phase in life as a chick, uh, is uh, diet is essentially that, arthropods. Then after that in life, they might change diets. You know, you have some that are seed eaters, etc. but the very beginning starts with arthropods because it's very rich in protein, so extremely high in energy. So this is an absolutely critical source of uh, food for wildlife. Uh, actually, arthropods are also important, an important source of uh, food for even arthropods because you know, they eat each other as well, right? Uh, and for fish and uh, a realm really of uh, biodiversity depend on that. Of course, at the human level, so more focused or more centered on human, they have an incredible economic and environmental impact on our forest and our crop, you know, for many different reasons. They pollinate, uh, some of these arthropods are pollinators, for instance. Some other are a controlling pests as well, other arthropods. So things, you know, things are in balance. Um, I just want to mention something that I'm not mentioning in the slide is also we are losing them at a great speed. There have been recent studies and, and some of these studies uh, come out of Europe, for example, in Germany, where suddenly they were looking higher in the taxonomy and realizing that uh, a whole you know, population of insects you know, overall were declining in many of their sites, you know, in a, something like 75% of population decline, which is enormous. So, but now to try to bring it to a climate change uh, issue here, uh, climate change also is affecting the timing of things, right? Uh, so the, 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 the leaf are coming at a different time, therefore the activity of insect also is uh, changing in terms of when things happen and the bird migration and breeding are also changing. So the one dollar question is, are the plants, insects and birds all together responding to the same degrees to these kind of varying uh, factors, right? Uh, another way of formulating it is, are migratory birds um, migrating earlier enough to take advantage of those important food resources which they count on for successful raising, successfully raising their young, right? Uh, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, remember uh, this uh, is an incredible food, uh, food source, right, for uh, the young of uh, many uh, species and food species in general. So what do we do for us? We're counting to know what insects are there and how much the abundance there and what we want to do ourselves as well is to compare abundance over time and from one place to another, so regionally. And that also fit to fit within their um, uh, goals, the goals of uh, United, the University of North Carolina or Caterpillar Scout. Um, they are looking at the same kind of things, right? So that helps local scientists, national scientists through this university and global scientific efforts because the data is global. Our protocol is uh, their tool, their app. They have a very nice database, which is the Caterpillar Scout. That's a little logo there. All right. A question so far um, about this kind of slides? No, you good? No, nope. yeah, good for now, yeah. Excellent. So four sites where we do insect survey. One is a growing center. I like to show that because it shows a little bit of um, uh, the, the variety of uh, what we see in these places. Um, the growing center is in Somerville, and Somerville is one of the densest, you know, city and fastest developing city in the United States. So it's uh, it's very hard to find green spaces, and still, you know, you can see little critters like that. This one is a tough one, the true bug, stink bug. Uh, but look at this little beauty and uh, you know, the reflection on the eye. I mean, I'm always fascinated, fascinated to look at them. So that's one. Um, Here's another one, the Fels. So the Fels is a, a large, fairly large, yeah, um, urban forest. Uh, we spend a lot of time there and we seem super happy to have you next week with us, uh, starting to stepping in, in it, doing the thing that we do. Uh, so look at this beautiful cicada. Yeah. I think there's going to be an eruption of cicada very soon, uh, somewhere down south, they're all talking about it because uh, here they have a, a cycle of 17 years or 13 years for some others. Uh, in Europe, I don't remember me as a child in France having this kind of a large, you know, synchronous uh, uh, event. Uh, they are just, you know, popping all over the time, uh, all over the place all the time, but, but not in such large numbers. So it's, it's fascinating to see that. Yeah. I remember the last year, they were, it was such a distinct summer because they were so loud every night. I could hear them in my yard. <laughs> I found a dead one once on my patio, too. It had dropped from the tree. Yeah. Huge. 
it, 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 they are huge, they're beautiful, they're quite impressive, right, uh, little uh, uh, critters. And the sound that they can do all together, I was reading, I think even this morning, I was reading an article about that, that it can reach something like 100 decibels. You can be deaf, you can turn deaf with these things when you are too exposed so long to such a, a volume. So incredible. Wow. <laughs> right. So one of my famous little dis digressions here. Um, <laughs> what habitat? So uh, it's still closed. I was looking today. Uh, the habitat, which is a massive urban site, is still closed. So we won't be able to get there. I hope to show you that too because it's a very nice, very precious little place there. Um, and then Iwat Fresh Pond, which is going to be uh, your major site for you. So you're going to uh, really enjoy the site a lot. So on the map, so these are our partners. And here, by the way, all these uh, webinars and slides are interactive. So if you click on stuff, you're going to land somewhere. So never hesitate. I'm going to click on a few there. Um, but on the map, this is where things are, right? So where we count arthropods, that's all our sites. We're doing plenty of stuff. But where we really count arthropods are here uh, at Long Pond, at two sites at Long Pond. Here, uh, this is a mass Sodobon habitat. I don't know when they're going to reopen. Here, you're going to focus on that, you see. And here at the growing center. Um, here, this is just a link directly to the site. You know, if I was clicking, for example, at Fresh Pond, just to show you there, uh, this is what would happen. You would be redirected. You see that map, huh? Okay, good. Yeah. Um, it never really centered it, but this is, right, the site at Fresh Pond. And this is, these trees that you see here are actually what's called the circles. They are called circles. And these are the where we count them. On this transect, we do the visual survey. And there, on these trees, we are counting. Right. OK. Let me close that. Uh, and here, if you were looking, if you were clicking on that, you would see a dashboard for this site from the Catapulus count. And I like this kind of little dashboard because it gives quick idea, a quick idea of what's going on in terms of the data. I've been um, starting the survey this year, so that's where you see a few surveys there. Of course, there's going to be yours as well, right? Uh, and, and not much in terms of, oh, oh that's, um, that must be accumulated. I have to uh, dig into that uh, because I haven't seen that many things yet. Uh, that must be accumulated over the two years, right? But it's a nice little summary of what's going on in the area. All right. Questions so far about this map? We're good? Good for now, yeah. Okay, excellent. What did I do? Did I do something? Let me check. Oh. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, that's what I want to mention. Sorry. Here we are. Uh, a little something that we want to remember, of course, we are in a COVID time right now, so things are changing every week. So uh, I'll check you know, before we get into the field what's going on at that place uh, at that time, right? Uh, but in any case, we should really to try to, um, uh, to get a distance from one another, right? Uh, the field ethics and survey, uh, the field ethics are, you're going to see that in the next slide, and plus in the field, you're going to experience that with us. So. Um, no issue in the survey protocol. We're going to go into the details because uh, you see you're going to be with me in the field. So, um, all right. And I, for people who you know look at this webinar and are going to become our citizen scientists or already or forgot, we also have a monthly office field hour. So once a month at every site, we invite people to join us because it's nice to do surveys together. We challenge one another, one another, each other, right? Uh, in terms of identification skills, etc. And um, it's also a nice kind of a community thing that we're going to get. Right? And it's also a good opportunity to ask questions that uh, we may have. And we also have a forum there. So do not hesitate to join that. We see you on that. If any person who is a new volunteer, new citizen scientist, join this uh, forum. In terms of ethics, for us, we always seek to have zero impact or to minimize disruption, right? So zero impact sometimes is hard. So only when you start looking at the branch, uh, uh, looking for caterpillars or arthropods, but we minimize disruption. And actually there is an effect of that. Uh, when you look at the protocol by the University of North Carolina, they are doing two kinds of protocols. One, which is a deep cheat where, you know, you shake violently, you know, a branch so that anything that is on this leaf drop onto a sheet of some sort and then you count or well, then there is a visual we do the visual that we might do one or two v sheet just to have a kind of a, a, a complementary type of data 
but we don't necessarily want to do the beach scene first because you're missing also stuff when you do that, right? You're missing the thing that we're on it and flies away. We see them, right? Um, and second thing is, well, then when you have a bunch of caterpillars that are on your piece of fabric, then what do you do with them after that? You, are you, can you guarantee that you're putting exactly them back to the same spot? Of course not. So we seek to minimize disruption and we're interested to see the kind of data that we bring into the picture is actually, you know, of high quality and if it could fulfill. We have a tendency as scientists to overindulge by, you know, intruding a lot, but actually can we do it? Can we have good quality data by intruding less, by minimizing disruption, okay? So um, that's our, uh, I'm a birder, so often I bring that into the picture because even bir birders fall, you know, into uh, some form of not being too ethical, coming too close to nest, etc. Remember, we would not want to have someone, you know, popping over uh, the crib of our kids or, so that's the same for them, right? So uh, it's an act of compassion. Um, here are a few things to just remember. So that's a very short version. Stay on approved trails, except when we have a very specific purpose, right? Uh, a reason to be on a specific trail. No chasing, interrupting, or disrupting. Okay. No mobbing, crowding, cornering. And it's interesting. People say, you know, all these terms are kind of alike. You would be surprised. If you don't spell them out, someone is going to mob or crowd, not realizing that they're actually mobbing, right? Or in a corner, it's, it's amazing. So you kind of have to bring the entire, you know, variation on the theme to make sure that you're hitting every single one in, in the mind of people. Never cut off white line. Yeah, B, that's a little bit tough, right? Um, usually be slow and quiet. That's also your best shot at having your best shot at uh, arthropods and birds, right? Uh, never feed or bait, right? Um, Watch where you step, and that is important for us who are counting arthropods because often we go to a plant to look at something, right? So we're looking at eye level and we forget to look down, and that happens to me too. And then we trample on another plant, which are another insect, right? So, um, and which might be even endangered, maybe not the insect, but the plant. So we should just be careful about where we are and bear in of our position in space. Uh, that is going to be interesting because we're going to, we might want to do some moth lights, right? Uh, so we're going to have some white lights in order to uh, attract them, but we want to do that in a time uh, in a timely manner so that we don't disrupt them, disturb them more than necessary. I'll explain that during your internship. You see. All right, and then we have the full etiquette on our site uh, that you can uh, and then that you should actually look at at some point. Now, counting in a nutshell, what you're going to be doing next week and this summer with me with us. Uh, I don't know if you know that, but I remember when I was a kid counting with that thing. I cannot, I don't yeah. think I remember doing it now, how to do it, but I, I used to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So for us, for us, it's going to be as, you know, uh, core citizen scientists and scientists that you want, we're going to go to our site, not a few times a month. We're going to do that every week. Important. Um, the first thing to do is to record time, whether at the beginning uh, and at the end of our survey. And uh, so I'll show you that in the field. The, the, the best, you know, my little trick is simply to take a snapshot of my best weather app that makes and making sure that I have indeed, you know, the, the weather, uh, the temperature, the temperature is there, uh, the wind and the humidity. I do that, although we are not necessarily recording uh, that in Caterpillar Scout, but in our log, we record, you know, the, the, the range. Right? Um, then we're going to go to our mark trees. So at French Pond, for example, actually at each site, there are 10 mark trees. We can have more, but for now we have 10 mark trees. And so we look at our trees, we're going to find our tags, right? Open the app, we're going to find the tag on those mark trees, and this is the, the tags. We'll have better tags very soon when we can laminate and have things in color. And then we look from the tag to the tip of the branch, making sure that we have about 30 to 50 leaves, right? And we count arthropods. Um, there are little things, little uh, a trick. You know, I always advise that before touching that branch and moving things, you will look so that we have a good look to see if there is actually something on it before it flies away. And then once I've done this kind of uh, first visual survey and recorded stuff, then I go uh, and I look underneath it. That's pretty cool. The app is very uh, intuitive. We're going to go that in a few uh, slides um, after this one. And something that I do more and more is 
every record that I have under this app, which is different from iNaturalist, but I try to supplement with a visual data because they accommodate for uploading a picture. And that helped them tremendously with identification, like that they can gain a confidence, you know, with respect to the volunteer or the citizen scientist who is recording, say, oh, this one is a good one, right? Or this one, you know, needs maybe a little bit more work, etc. cetera. Uh, but, and that, that helps us as well, us as a citizen scientist, because by looking at the data, you know, over time, we realize that we make mistakes and then we can correct our mistakes in the future, right? So it validates the records. Okay. And actually, this past week, I got, a, so I've been surveying myself, I've been surveying all the sites, waiting for you to join me. And um, I got an email from Caterpillar Scout. They have a, a very nice follow-up where they regularly, they have automated emails simply because they probably grab the data, you know, cross the data, analyze the data, and then boom, push an email. And they said that of my records, you know, so far, something like 93% of my record had been validated by, you know, uh, the community, etc. which is good because, you know, some of these insects are super hard uh, to um, really uh, identify. So we're going to try to reach even more. So now let's go to a little bit of um, the visual of the app, right? So we get on the site, right? And, oh, first, that's true. Uh, people who help us counting and use, you know, uh, the protocol to survey our trees, they need to create an account, right? They have a specific app. So there is, uh, they have an app on iTunes and an app on Play Store, so iTunes, Apple, and Play Store, Google, Android phones. And, but then, before your first visit, visit it's important that you get a little bit familiar with um, the major order, a major order of uh, orthopods, and they have two things. Uh, one which is um, uh, an online quiz, so they have some documentation, and we have our own documentation as well, which I probably should add there because we have a good documentation too. Um, and they have an online ID quiz just to test yourself before you get into uh, you know, the field. And then they have a fun little game. Have you done that, uh, Lucy? I did. Yeah, it was really fun. I enjoyed it. <laughs> the, the, so... Uh, and here, I think that you need to reach, uh, I forgot how many in order to pass their stuff, uh, which yeah. is thing. But the virtual survey game is hard because they changed the scale. Did you notice? Yes, they did change the scale. And I had a hard time. Like, it would throw me off. And I, also, it's so hard to get it exactly right. But you get points when you're close to right. So, yeah, you know. yeah, well, so I like it. It's a fun, uh, you know, when I have a little uh, break time, that's what I do. I say, let's play a little bit. Let's uh, sharpen yeah. my <laughs> So it's cool. It's really cool. They do, they're really doing a fantastic job. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, get familiarized yourself with the survey protocol, which you're, you are doing right now, isn't it? Okay. Good. No question there. You had no issue with that, Lucy, when you got into that? Yeah, no issue. It's all set. Yeah. Excellent. Then you are in the field, you open your app. Actually, my tip is you take your phone, you put your little lens, the lens that I'm going to give you uh, next week. Uh, and then you can open your app, but go to your camera right away, because if you see that bug, for example, you're going to be right away, you're going to want to take this shot, right? So, um, and then look at the tree tag, and here I was at the fells. The tree tag, let me go back here quickly. This is the three first letter on this tag, and on the new tag, it's going to be very obvious, even more obvious than that, right? So you enter this three letters code, right? And then it's going to say, okay, it's a paper birch. And actually you want to double, you want to check that. You want to say, oh yeah, yeah, that's a birch because very quickly you're going to be able to identify the tree, recognize the tree. And if it shows something else, well, you're on another tree, maybe on that site, right? So that's a way of uh, paying attention and making sure that you are hitting the right tree. Uh, that is filled by default. That is filled by default. And then we're going to go, remember, BG versus visual. We stay on the visual, and then we click continue. If it had rain, because it's a different kind of condition, then you would indicate that the uh, leaves are wet, right? Then you click on the continue, right? And then, so let's go back there. This is a red-banded leaf hopper. hopper. I love these guys. Um, so you're going to say, yeah, I saw one, right? You click yes and continue, and what happened is, they bring a new screen where they're going to say, okay, what did you see? So here, what I'm going to try to find, that's why you need to be a little bit familiar with all this order before you hit the field, is, all right, I'm looking for the hopper group, right? The, the red-banded leaf hopper, 
the way it looked like, right? This is definitely the shape of a hopper, right? So I'm going to go for a hopper. If you couldn't find it, or if you didn't know, you would say unidentified or something like that, right? But when you are with me, you know, test me, whatever, I'll be there in order to speed up you know, your uh, identification at the order level. That's another thing that I like with this kind of protocol. It's not at the order level, which is fairly easy in a sense, because everybody can recognize, you know, what is a bee or, you know, a group of bees and wasps, and maybe so flies a little bit harder, but bees and wasps, people know what it is compared to a beetle or a caterpillar. So they're kind of, you know, obvious groups, right? So I like that. So actually the hopper is not there. That's not that. The grasshopper is different in terms of the order. So you would have to scroll down there. So don't forget to scroll down is the thing. And then I pick my leafhopper and cicadas. Cicadas are actually uh, um, siblings somehow, I forgot how you say in English, of leafhopper, right, in family. And um, so I pick that, and then you know that there is things that are important. Even if the thing fly away, always think in terms, when you see it, always say, oh, what is it in terms of size? So for me, it's easier because centimeters and millimeters are things that are kind of a second nature for me. So I make mistake, of course, but uh, this is something that I know much better than inch and whatever, right? So uh, this one is uh, roughly six millimeters. So it's in millimeters in terms of the length. And be careful because the leaves are going to be in another unit in terms, not the unit, but in terms of the scale. Uh, so I click that and then I go, right? And oh, the picture, right? So here, Try to have a picture as much as possible, right? That's why you have your clip, you have your camera already, so that you, you have taken the picture already. So here, if you click that, you have two possibilities, to take your picture right, right there, or to go to li your library. Me, what I do usually is like, because I look at the branch first, and I approach and I take pictures, so I take a bunch of pictures before things move. And then after that, I start my survey, right? So usually I go to the library, right? And I think it's a better thing because you can also quickly edit your pictures on the fly. Increase the contrast. You know, sometimes it might be too dark because you were under a leaf. So you might be able to increase your contrast right in your library before you upload it to, your, uh, to, to, to this app, right? If you have a few notes to do to add, you can add them here, right? And then, oh, so here. I click on the library. I put my little hopper there, right? You don't see very well, but... Actually, I, I wish that they were showing the entire photo because sometimes you have a bunch of photos and you say, um, did I pick the right one? But this is the view that you have, right? And, and then I click save, right? In this specific instance, in, uh, instance I already had a few other things that I had um, counted for that tree. So this is my leaf hopper. This is the one that I just did here, right? And then I had previously, I had another leaf, leaf hopper, which was a little bit bigger. And I had another beetle, which is actually a click beetle. And sometimes in the note, if I know what it is, I say it's a click beetle. Or I know the family or I know the genus, I go for that, right? Uh, what did I want to say? I wanted to say something else. There are some stuff sometimes, so these questions are going to rise, you know, uh, in the field. Sometimes you might have aphids, for example. So you might have a population of aphids. Aphids, aphids, I think that's what you say, huh? aphids. Uh, right now, there are two kinds of aphids for one population. You have the winged aphids, which are slightly bigger. They are females. They are about to disperse. And then you have little ones, which are actually the ones that were popped out of them. Because the aphids have a very interesting life cycle where they, have, they go in a time where they just clone themselves. So they produce, you know, on a branch or something. They just, it's almost like they put a new version of themselves. Right? It's, it's weird to see that. And then comes a time where they have their wing and then they disperse in order to colonize another branch, right? So they're able to clone, totally clone themselves, asexual, you know, uh, reproduction. Uh, and then they can turn into, okay, this is time to be sexual now. And then it's, it's a fascinating thing. So in this case, what I do, I might have 60 aphids. I might have, let's say, 10 winged aphids, right? And then 50 others. Then I split the record with... One for 10 winged aphids with a picture, and one for the 50 little ones aphids with another picture. So, I mean, so does it make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's, it's cool. It's fine. 
So here we are, we continue. So I have all my arthropods for that, and then I'm going to go and here. So this was the general information at the very beginning. This is all when you count the arthropods here, right? And then it went to that, this is a little tree. And so here, what they're going to ask you, ask question about is about the herbivory. This branch that you are looking at, how much, how eaten has it been so far, right? And how developed it is, right? So you don't have, for a visual thing, you don't have to do the number of leaves. By default, it's 50, right? What you want to do, by the way, in the field is to check that that branch still has 50 leaves, right? It can be defoliated, etc. in which case it's time to move the branch, right? So when you're hitting such thing, tell me, because we'll be in the field together most of the time, right? And so that we can change the tag. Or when you're comfortable enough, you can change the tag and then tell me so that we can update our documentation so that people can find the new thing, right? So the paper approach there, um, you're going to look at the average length, uh, leaf length. So uh, last week, or two weeks ago, I forgot, it was about nine centimeters, right? And the way that you do that, actually, I'm surprised. Oh, that's the other one. I'm surprised. I find that a little bit high. <laughs> Just, so, uh, yeah, a little bit high. We'll check that. For, for well, maybe, really, in the sales? Anyway, there is a little tip that I'll show you, which is uh, that length here is three centimeters. So it's a nice little ruler. You can either have a ruler. I mean, I'm trying to have as less you know, equipment as possible and use my body as another ruler uh, so that I can be quick. Um, so I counted nine centimeters. We'll double check this Wednesday. And then in terms of herbivory, I like actually the little visual. You're going to look on average, right? Uh, same thing for there. You're looking at the average leaf. So you're going to make a judgment call saying, okay, that's more or less my average size leaf here. And then I'm going to count. And then you're going to look at how much it has been, not this leaf, but in general, eaten. And you're going to go by the number of holes, for example, that there are in those leaves, right? And make a judgment call in terms of, okay, is 1% to 5% of um, this uh, group of leaves have been eaten or less, right? Or more, okay? So that's that. And then you click finish and you finish your tree. So that's one tree, one survey tree. So super, really super easy, right? The, the, the hard thing is essentially to look at the order, to be quick enough, right? Uh, I personally spend time doing that because it's also a very meditative, you know, type of, uh, in a sense, you, you, you get lost in those leaves. You're looking at everything, you're marveling at everything. So it's just a cool little activity. Equipment, super easy. Your phone, your lens, right? And then your measuring tools. And I did that yesterday because I wanted something visual. <laughs> super easy. You know, usually your thumb is three centimeters. And on top of that, I have another... Uh, uh, tool, which is my nail here, my nail across is one centimeter, right? You might want to measure yours to see, you know, how much it, it is. And remembering that your index is like that, you can also take measure like that, right? So very, very easy. Um, that is slightly less pertinent for those type of pictures. But you know, while I'm here taking the picture for caterpillar scout, you know that I'm also taking pictures in general for iNaturalist as well. All my records also go on iNaturalist. So this is a little reminder of when you are taking that shot, you know, those few shots, try to also take several um, uh, angles because when you upload those uh, records on iNaturalist, by the way, it might help you to identify better next time what are on those branches, right? Because um, Caterpillar Scout only allow one picture. I don't know why, not more. But so I use iNaturalist, of course, to count occurrences anyway, but also as a mean of improving on identification. Right? Okay. And you know uh, the, the guide on our sites about, you know, all the essential for documentation. And that's pretty much it. Just want to check where we are. That's really all that there is to it. You know, what takes time is more to be out there. Uh, some people supposedly can take, you know, only two minutes and looking at those branch. Honestly, we take more because we enjoy it as well, right? So, and we are super diligent. And as a result of that, by the way, is I'm going to try to find that here. To maybe have that here. Um, as a result of that, let me click on that. Simply. 
Yeah, it's not going to work. I'm going to escape there and I'm going to go to Earth wide aware. This, this is a, because of, this is a cool little thing to know about us. So we take a little bit of time, we enjoy it. We also do that often as a group, not lately. Um, but last year, which was our first year, let me show you that in our science report. You probably have seen that in the science report since you read it. I think it's in the short version. Let me see in the short version. But Caterpillar Scout last year had something like, um, is it here? It's here. They had 55 sites, active sites, if I'm correct. Uh, it's not there, but it doesn't matter. Um, and look at that. So it's not all our sites, right? These are other sites, you know, uh, from other states. And look where we are. Yeah. Right? And yeah. people said, why? I said, well, two reasons. We have caterpillars. I mean, if you don't have a caterpillar, this is not, you know, the fault of the people, right? But we're also good at finding stuff. Right, because we like to take a little bit of our time. That's also our time together. So building a community there. So very cool stuff. Uh, I think that's this one. Let me go back there. Do you have questions so far before we just browse up to what's next? Um, only one. I just wondered, I haven't really used Caterpillar's Count in the field yet. So one of my questions is, um, does it have like an interactive map component like iNaturalist does where you can like, Look at different locations, or is it more like you enter your location just like manually? Like, or like I just wanted to know if there's a map component. You don't enter your location because, okay, very important point. Um, your trees do not move, the trees are already there, so it's a mock tree, right? Uh -huh. So, you're going to survey that tree over and over again. So, when I entered those sites, I entered the GPS location of those sites. So, they know. Okay. Know, right? So, it's a different right. thing when you move along, right? And it uh -huh. takes a picture. So, you still need to have the GPS location anyway because you're going to also upload those records on iNaturalist, regardless. Right. Uh, right. But um, you don't need that because the GPS is already at the site. You're going to a specific okay. site. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, that does make sense. Yeah. Okay. That's my only question, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So uh, I love this quote, right? That's what we're trying to do with our interns and you, Lucy, right? To make you a complete naturalist for the years to come, for your entire life. Uh, this is uh, such important work, really, uh, that we are doing. And the people who are with us are very important to us because they're doing that critical work with us. So, um, this is less for you, but more for the people who are listening here. Uh, the way to get into our program and certainly into the insect um, uh, surveys, uh, what we want to do this year is to continue our three kind of surveys. The seeing, insect occurrence and survey. The counting here, insect abundance survey, using the caterpillar's count right, uh, protocol. And then the next one, and we'll do a webinar probably next week, which is the insect connector campaign. And it's a very cool campaign because it feeds our data as well as the data of the National Phenology Network. And the same thing, they gather all the data from all their partner, we are a partner, and a final champion for them as well, uh, so that they can really start to put the picture, you know, something into a picture and have a better understanding of what's happening nationally per state and uh, across the different uh, geographical scale and time as well. Uh, so this is our little QR code for um, going to our Citizen Science Program site, Come with us. We have tons of opportunity. We're a cool group. And that's all that I have. Good. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.